Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hello, everybody. And tonight we'll be reviewing um, the Saw film franchise, which started in two, all, 2004 to 2007. In tw- 2017. There is one due out this year, I believe. Uh, I think it's called Spiral, but uh, I think it's going to be out in May. Yeah. That like would be, usu- be the ninth movie in the franchise. Unlike its usual October Halloween yeah, thing. Yeah, it's interesting. That's a, but maybe because of all the coronavirus stuff, there's, there's this old bugger, let's put it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who knows? People need to be cheered up a little bit, don't they? Mm, yeah. True, true. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so just so you guys know that this when this film fan size originally started as a short film with it by James Wan and what's his name um, the, the film blah, 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 the writer blah, blah. Lee 1L yeah they both worked on a short film of this and it's on YouTube to so you guys know and well, I did work on it. they made a short one as a uh, a vehicle to get funding yes yeah. and mm. it's um <clears throat> Originally, they were gonna. They were trying to get the money from Australia. Yeah, yeah, well, 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 yeah. Well, these guys were Australian, yes. okay, but yeah, who went to America to make a movie mm-hmm. uh, because they couldn't get funding in Australia. Yeah, they had, but, oh yes, no, I yeah. don't know, sort of attitude over in America. They said, oh goody. Yeah, mm. I would have thought. Um, I was just telling Mike just earlier today that if they did this movie, Australia. They would have probably put Australia on the map. Well, they would have Australianized the movie and probably sank the movie. Mm, could be true. Thanks, yeah, so, but then again, yeah. they made Wolf Creek, and I don't know yeah, how Wolf, successful to me, well, that was. Wolf one. Creek wasn't that great. Mm, I see. Yeah, I mean, to me, yeah. So anyway, moving on. So this film franchise is like, say, nine episodes long. If not, no, yeah, nine, nine, nine films, yeah. If mm. the ninth one <clears throat> that would have come out last year would have... Well, well, it's going to be out this made year. Nine, it's obviously. Gonna, it's going to be out in May this year. Yes. Supposedly. Mm-hmm. Yes. And anyway, it was a pretty awesome one. And along the way, they um, they changed different directors, stuff like that. Um, James Wan did and the first movie. Did the first three movies? Did he? Yes. Directing. Um, writing it. No, writing it. Yeah, we only directed the first movie. Yeah, the yeah. rest of the time, it's the um, mm. directorship turned over to someone else. Well, I think he, didn't he, wasn't the exec producer or something rather? Yeah, or he was an executive producer yeah, 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 yeah. for some of them. Mm, yeah. But James Wan's done a really good job. Mm, yeah, for um, a um, f- independent filmmaker. Actually, I think he came straight out of film school and did this too. So this is his first, this is James Wan's first uh, go at directing a movie. Yeah, he. I think mm. he also did um, Deadly Silent. <clears throat> is that right? I really don't know. I didn't look. Mm, I think he did. Or and but some, it's his, and it's some his, other um, yeah. horror movie related it's movies his, his, too. This is his first feature film. The mm. I don't care about a commercial. I'm just telling. <laughs> I'm, just tell, I'm just telling our viewers out listeners yeah, well, out there about how James Wan has made a big step in oh, this he's, industry. Oh, he's done lots of movies probably by now, but mm-hmm. at the moment this is his first go at being a director so mm. i think he's done pretty good as the first one straight out of film school i agreed mm. so anyway moving on <clears throat> so we thought we might seeing as this is a long franchise we won't we'll, <coughs> we'll talk well, about the first one we'll, we'll talk about the first movie first and we movie. might talk about something other bits as well but yeah. anyway can i talk about all the bits on the first movie like yeah, i normally sure, do okay can. now <coughs> excuse me i don't have coronavirus i just got a sinus attack <coughs> so please be with me. Yeah. Now, okay, right. We we mentioned James Wan as the director. Mm-hmm. Uh, James and uh, Lee Wan L uh, actually wrote the original story, uh, and I think the script was written by Lee mm-hmm. Lee Wan L, uh, and uh, Lee Wan L actually played one of the main roles in the movie as well. But we we'll get on to the cast in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, tw- the production company was Twisted uh, Pictures, which consisted of Greg Hoffman, Oren Coles, Coles mm. and Mary Berg. Mm. Uh, had a budget of $1.2 million. Mm. The box office did $104 million. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a damn good return for your money. Yes. Now, despite what critics say about the movie, which I'll talk about later on. Yes. Um, 
But this movie was the first one in the franchise, and uh, yeah. and uh, who knows? They may not have been a franchise, mm-hmm. uh, but it just it just something about the movie. It was raw. It was rough. And it, it had was, a good twist ending. Yeah, in but, it, yeah but it was filmed in eighteen days. Like you remember your pro your your pro- production was done in about that wasn't it mm. yeah so it's very very hard to actually uh, mm. do a rush job he ate, he couldn't do multiple takes he had to uh, go one or two takes that's it of each mm. person doing whatever so he couldn't just go oh let's t- do take five or take six or something rather he couldn't he couldn't afford the time mm. so he's done a really really good job so t- uh, a big applause to uh, James. Yeah. Yes, anyway, so... Now, I'll do the cast now, can I? Yes, can you I, may. Can I, can I? Okay. okay, Lee Wanell plays Adam uh, Sandheit. Uh, Gary Elwes plays uh, Le- Lawrence Gordon. Uh, he's the other person. Well, there's these two guys locked up in a, a room which Sarah will tell you about. John Kramer is the nasty guy, and he's played by Tobin Bell. And I cannot think of a better person to play... The bad guy. Yeah, I like the fact that throughout the story, everyone who's connected to him, who is a victim of Jigsaw, yeah, somehow turns rather, out to be a bit of a connect. He connects yeah, some, to it. He's, he knows him yeah. through the hospital, or his next door neighbours, or something or other, or, or something. He knows yeah. something about yeah. them, something that goes. Yeah. That you may only know. Yeah, that's all stuff. Mm. Yeah, so personal contact through. Friends, neighbours, hospitals and stuff. So he's he's getting back yeah. at people who are naughty. Anyway, and not irrespective- to mention his apprentices <coughs> kind of um, help him, you know, like... Yeah, he, got, he drags to- people in. Yeah, but like- sometimes his apprentices, like his first movie, was a guy who he gave... Well, I won't tell why. He was forced into helping him. Mm. Yeah, but you'll tell the story later. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, Danny Glover is in this movie as well. Got old Danny out of um, Lethal Weapon. And... Um, he plays a, a detective, David Tapp. A guy called Ken Lung plays it. his assistant, Stephen Singh. And Shawnee Smith plays Amanda Young, who's also working with Mr. Kramer to help hurt these people and put them put in this misery. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of other people. I'm not going to go through. There's another, so I think, another ten people. But they're sort of smaller, lesser roles. So I yeah. can't tell... I can't list everybody all the time. Yeah, on again, too guys, this is mostly focused on, on the two guys, the mainly. two guys, and their antagonist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically centered around three guys, a couple of detectives who drop out of the scene pretty fast. Mm, yeah. At least one does. I do they? think <laughs> it's interesting that that <coughs> that mm. in this one, in the first one, um, the detective um, Tap thought at one point that Mister. Dr. Gordon was um, the, the, pos- killer. the killer, but then by the by the s- seventh, no, no, not seven, the sixth movie, I think. You? Oh, no, wait. Oh, one of them. Yes, the sixth <laughs> movie, we found out that he has been hiding behind the scenes as one of his appren- uh, Jigsaw's apprentices. Give him a bit of a helping hand. And I don't even know if Amanda or even Detective mm. um, Hoffman were aware of the fact that Gordon Probably was not. around. I mean, he's the one who does all Probably the surgery yeah. in this one. Where well, someone's got to do it. Mm, true. Mm. We're going to insert a key in someone's body. You know? Yeah, or mm. insert one in behind someone's eye, which is impossible. Because, yeah. bear in mind, guys, John C- Crame Jigsaw is an engineer, and engineers and can't do that. And he makes all these nice groovy... Na- naughty toys. <laughs> he can do n- naughty toys, but he cannot probably insert he, he something into your body without making sure that you bleed to death. We did an angle grind or something or other for a cut, cut off wheel to get into you. Yeah. yeah, that sort of stuff. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Excuse me, folks. <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't want to kill yeah. the person. He, want, he says in one, the third movie, that he doesn't kill people and he despises you know, killers. Yeah, yeah he, he sets them up to uh, kill themselves. Kill themselves, or well, put them through trials, which could lead to them killing themselves. Exactly. He, so. he, he gives them a way out, but it's all cryptic, generally. Yeah, yeah it's mostly all about trying to decipher the <sighs> small riddles. clues or riddles yeah. in Jigsaw's little um, quotes. Yeah. It's just all a matter of trying to work it out. <laughs> and yeah. Excuse me. By the by the um 
what I think it was the jig the 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 eighth jigsaw movie that one really had an interesting um you know it bit of did quote. that was that was a little bit all over the place that one that was that was retro and current time back yeah. back and forth and in the end. Yeah, I wouldn't say you can got confused, but you're surprised. Yeah. Another thing about hmm. the um, Saw series is that they keep jumping back and forth between the present and the past a yeah, lot. Yeah, flashbacks and stuff. A yeah. lot of times the hmm. viewers are probably wondering, are we still in the present or are we in the past? Yeah. They do it, they keep you on your toes. And all the time it really works. I mean, you get... You get the audience satisfied, and you get to see what happens to the old characters from the first, second, or third, yeah. or fourth movie. <clears throat> anyway, do you want to tell them a story now? Yes, I will. Once upon a time, there was no... So, um, we start <coughs> off where Adam and Dr. Gordon are inside a bathroom type Well, they wake up in a bathroom. In an unknown place, yeah. in an unknown location somewhere, we don't know It's a grotty bathroom too. It has been clean for a long time, yeah. Yes, and there's a dead body between them, which... Oozing blood. Yeah. And they try to find out who put them there. At first, they, they assume each one of them must have been the culprit that put yeah. them there. They didn't trust each other. They thought, well, who would? Yeah, and each one has his own set of secrets, you know. Um, having two people in the bathroom, there's always secrets. <laughs> Not too many. Well, there's a lot of people have secrets. That's a scary thought. So anyway, our, so our antagonists, if you can call them that, I'm not sure. Naughty guy. Is, um, well, he's un- he, he remains unknown. This is one of the reasons why I love about um, starting off in the first of the franchise because you don't know the identity of the killer. No, it's quite interesting. He, well, he's, he's not the killer, the orchestrator of the uh, death scenes, has it? Okay, good point. <coughs> you, I mean, yeah. you at one point you think it's Zap, the orderly, who from, from the hospital, from the hospital. But as it turns out, it's not him. He's being manipulated also manipulated by too by someone else. Which yeah, so. It's like a chain. Not a circle of friends, but a circle of not so good friends. Mm. Yes. Anyway, so anyway, Dr. Gordon, he has a, a wife and a kid, and they're held hostage by the um, horrible um, bad guy, Zap. Yeah, well, yeah. Yes. And, <clears throat> me, and all the time, he um, tries to... Well, contact them, for, even though throughout the time they're trying to figure out the clues that Jigsaw has laid out for them. At one point, they find those saw things, those, what do they call them? Um, hacksaws. Hacksaws. And they try to cut through the chains. There's some chains on their legs, padlocked. They're manacled to some pipes. Yeah, padlocked to their the And they try to cut through the chains of the hacksaws. But then Gordon and, yeah, figured honestly, out something. Yeah. You figured out that they have to cut through their feet. You cut through the leg to get out of the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a, not, it wouldn't be my first choice. Mm-hmm. No, no. Yeah, no. and through flashbacks, he finds out who is put them there. As it turns out, he he talks about um, a sort of jigsaw killer who... Or not really a killer, as we well, point yeah, out. Th- yeah, there was a... Or they... Th- the, the, the police called him a killer. Yeah. The jigsaw killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Gordon was dragged in as a suspect, what, five months earlier or something? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, and uh, he, mm. he was acquitted. I'll be honest, we're cleared. Not, uh, yeah, uh, eventually, um, and, the detectives, um, they do eventually find the w- so one of the um, hideouts where Jigsaw was, like, was staying in. Hanging around. And... Again, this is another one of those clues that Jigsaw probably planned ahead mm-hmm. to make sure they were going to come there and have to face their own tests. Yeah. Yeah, they had one where a man was sitting in a chair and these two drills are placed near his neck. Yeah, Ugh. once it started, he got, what was it, a minute or something? Yeah. yeah so, and they're going to get close, close and drill into his neck. Yeah. Going, and, of nice. course, there's a lot of keys and you... You have to, I guess you have to work out which key would fit and what. Yeah, like, so, yeah, 50 or 60 keys, you had a couple of seconds to go through them. Unless you're really, really lucky. And a very, very observant. It's probably marked key. It's got a dot on it or something, right? It might have a dot or maybe <laughs> even a jigsaw piece, just like the jigsaw pieces are in yeah. that jigsaw mm. often puts yeah. on his victims. Mm. Yeah, somewhere. Which in the sequel, he explains that those jigsaw pieces represent 
um, a piece that they're missing from their lives. Exactly. Interesting. Interesting mm. thought, that is, guys. Very, very anyway, cryptic, roll very cool. On. You're, you're boring me now. Okay, okay. okay. So the um, policemen, they find his location and they <coughs> eventually run into <coughs> Jigsaw and about to take him down. But he takes him out with a single swipe to um, Mr. Tap's neck. Yeah, with a knife or something or other and cuts his throat. No, not enough to kill him, but yeah, just to, Enough uh, to make his bill cause scream in pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gushing blood and stuff. And yeah. He's all, uh, his assistant, Detective um, Singh, whatever, detective goes Singh. running after him and he gets caught he, in a booby trap. Yeah, he mm. trips a booby wire and... He gets shot by what? some shotguns that are, that are on mounted the on the ceiling. And he came through a doorway and he got blasted by, what, three or four shotguns. Yeah. So he wasn't very well yeah. after that. Yeah, and this mm. is where in this scene we hear a few snapshots of of cameras, probably from um, police investigation guys. Yeah, they, they, they jump forward. Yeah, yeah it's they, just yeah. like those ones you see in Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. where you hear uh, the um, famous yeah. ch- mm. um, camera snap noises. They do that, yeah. Mm. So obviously they come there and investigate what happened there and mm-hmm. the police officer died and the other guy got wounded. So they got a, a crime scene investigation sort of stuff. And yes. then they jump forward then? Again. Yes. Yeah, whatever. So anyway. They don't jump around a tad. Yeah. Anyway, dear old detective um, Tap, Tap blames Dr. Gordon and starts stalking in the most ho- Nasty most way. Way. And he loses his job for that too. Yeah, and becomes just an ordinary Mr. Tap instead of Detective yeah, Tap. Yeah, mm, forced yeah. to um, be leave. Well, leave. He was sacked from the police sacked force. From the police force. <laughs> so he's been kind of living in a hotel not too far from Dr. Gordon's house, taking photos and watching for his surveillance footage, trying to figure out if he is who he is. And he hired Adam to be um, his photographer to yeah, take snapshots of his what he's doing most yeah, of the time. Yeah, find out what he's doing behind the scenes. And he's actually having an affair with one of his students. Yeah, there was a scene As where... As one would. Yeah, he gets a scene where he goes to a hotel. There, She's about to do a dirty deed, but he stops her and he walks out. He, yeah, he... He's tired of doing this sort of thing. He wants to be faithful to his wife in that yeah, lovely... Yeah, because his wife is getting fed up with his... Um, busy attitude and all the time and he and she wants well she wants him to at least focus on her and her her kid there's a kid in this very important and his kid even was the first one who notices that there is danger in their house the boogeyman in a closet and there really was (laughs) Mm, yes indeed so anyway uh, eventually um, Dr. Gordon finds out that Zap is involved and he then gets a call from his mobile phone that was hidden in a side of the wall, and it, which they discover later on. And, of course, he can't really send out any calls because... It's blocked. Yes. He can only receive calls. So, mm. so if any, any person got to have the number is that. Or oh, whoever. He's got the phone, and the yeah. phone him, so, hey, here's your wife and kitty. Yeah. They're going to die if you don't do your job, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, he and she ends up, his wife ends up phoning him, telling him that that Adam was lying, which means that he Adam admits that he's been taking photos of him for months now, of him going to hotels and doing his <coughs> daily routines of going to hospitals, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And, of course, he's hired, as I said before, by Detective Tap. Ex-Detective Tap. Yes, I should say <laughs> ex-Detective Tap. So anyway, um, let me see. Oh yeah, it's time's running out, and Zap is about to kill um, he, yeah. Dr. Gordon's it's wife and his kitty. kid. But luckily enough, she was fast enough to uh, upper hand and Zap and well, it, for, she managed to get out of her bondage. Yeah, mm. and <coughs> Tap oh, soon arrives mm. on you know with his gun in hand and chases down. Zap in his car. Streets of San Francisco. And they soon arrive at the secret location of where the secret bathroom might be. I won't tell you get into details there because it sounds boring. Anyway, eventually they arrive and, of course, do- Tap is tapped out. He's dead. Gets killed off. Was he a tap dancer? 
funny. Oh, okay. Of course, Sorry. um, <laughs> it's mentioned in a video game. He makes an appearance in that, like he was saved by Jigsaw and put through his own set of tests. Uh-huh. But again, this is all fiction, not part of this movie. So again, I'll continue well, on. Stop digressing. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, um, Zap arrives at the bathroom and he attempts to kill both. Dr. Gordon and Adam at that because time was running out and eventually but eventually he gets taken down by Adam he's not quite dead yet yes mm. luckily enough Dr. Gordon has severed his leg or foot from yeah. the um chain Manicles. from and, manacle and he was calling out the room something yeah. yeah he then promises Adam that he'll come back and bring help uh, however, how long that might be. Yeah, he's a very, very slow crawler. Meanwhile, Adam is trying to find a key, possibly from Zap, but unfortunately, he finds a tape recorder, which is identical to the one they found in the bathroom where um, Jigsaw often gives yeah. you instructions. And then, then you hear that uh, Zap had his own. Uh, Hello, Zap. This is Jigsaw here. I want to play a game. I yeah. want to play a game. Yeah. Would you kill kill a innocent mother and father, mother and daughter to save, to your save life. his life, all that stuff? Yeah, Zap had been injected with some sort of poison, poison, and the only way to get uh, the, the antidote. antidote was to uh, kill people. Hmm. Or kill um, and his. Well, uh, kill the mother and daughter, or come and kill Doctor Gordon. Mm. Whatever. Whatever. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, we soon see the dead person in the middle of the room get up, and we realize, oh my gosh, this was the um kill all along. And we flash back to the past where we see the same person that was in a hospital bed in Doctor Gordon's hospital, yeah, or so not Doctor Gordon's. Well, the hospital. The hospital Dr. Gordon. he works in. Uh, Doctor Gordon's an oncologist. Mm. And John Kramer was a patient there who, I believe he had a tumour on his brain, a cancerous mm. tumour, which was going to kill him over about two years or something or other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, anyway, yeah. so... So that's um, how, yeah, then yeah. you got that flashback to him in hospital bed. Yeah. And, there, and eventually, yeah. um, John gets Dunno. up and he says, most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore. And then he closes the door, Adam is screaming, and dear old Jigsaw says, Game over, the famous catchphrase that you're all familiar with. And game, game over, all that. And we we hear as yeah. it fades out, as the darkness sets into the credits, we keep hearing Adam's screams of letting him out, let him out, all that stuff. Well, not really let him out, let him out. Just like, help, please don't let me, leave me in here, oh, all that stuff. And Exactly, all the good bits. But of course he doesn't die right away. He probably dies of... Either dehydration or no food or well, stuff. Well, everything. Dehydration, loss of blood, uh, whatever. And not to mention suffocation, because we find out much later in the third movie that Amanda suffocates dear old Oh, he's obviously come to him and run some plastic around his head. Yeah. yeah. To, to put him out of his misery. What a nice, charming lady. Oh, yeah. Until we find out later she's been setting up traps that makes him unwinnable. Yeah, well, yeah, see, later on in the movie, she, she helps make the traps up because John Kramer can't do them as much anymore and she sets them up as unwinnable traps, which is not very nice because mm. that's what happened to Adam. In, in this one here, he's supposed to be given a key... Mm. On his body or around mm. his neck or something or other, which mm. is the key to his shackles. Yeah, it got but flushed down threw, the toilet. But he, no, or, I mean, the, flushed into the bath. He just threw it in the bath with him. There's water in it, and he, when he moved, he dropped off him uh, and went down the plug hole. Mm. So he never knew the key existed. So that sort of stuff was a problem. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so Adam dies, obviously, yeah. uh, and um, John Gordon, we believe, obviously implied it in the movie. Yeah, uh, lives the fight another day. Yeah, and for a long time, die. a lot of people probably wondered if what happened to Dr. Gordon, he disappeared. Yes. Like, and I know that in most of these movies, well, part, well, we do have a few appearances here and there, I should yeah, mention. Yeah, cameo type thingies and stuff. And like, in some, like, say, so, like several ones, they would <clears> include <throat> the similar cast members here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. That was good fun. It was a very nice romp through a, dilapid- a dilapidated bathroom. Yeah, but actually, that's the best part about this. And now I've spoken to you a couple of times about this. If you are going to do a low budget film, and actually yes. in the notes here I read James Wan had the same. What do you? 
What you do, you, you limit the number of people you got, mm. which he did, two people in a room mainly, uh, and, and a very limited number of locations. What location you had? The main location was the bathroom. Yeah. That was it. He had some other ones there with the police station, that sort and of stuff. And yeah. his house, obviously. Yeah, yeah that sort of But mainly all the shots, yeah, but let's say three quarters of the shots, maybe more, were done in the bathroom. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Which hmm. does explain why in the car scenes, and they, they kind of just, that was a really silly car chase that I thought well, no, was seen. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just, just implied there's a car chase. Yeah. It was done on a low budget. Actually, now I'm going to talk about a few things production-wise and whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, I believe when James Wan was doing this, he was given a limited budget, he was hoping to get a Hitchcock-type effect cool. of directorship, but he couldn't have obtained that on his um, budget. Oh. So he gave it a good shot, and he did it more of a gritty, grungier sort of version, and I think it comes off, I, don't, I would say better than Hitchcock, different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. if anything better than or even i'm not going to compare stripes because when you look at it um mm. mo- i mean almost a lot of filmmakers probably got inspired by alfred hitchcock yeah and uh, yeah who have uh, you get involved into um yeah. horror and gore alfred hitchcock was said to be the master of suspense or something or other mm. um i don't know if he's a master of suspense but he really handled the genre really good and that was that was his um forte and mm. he was probably one of the many filmmakers who made a surprise killer. Like, you don't know the identity of the killer. Mm, yeah. You just assume that you know right away that it's the... it's. Well, you just know it's someone it's that... Heading in a particular it's heading direction. in a direction that you don't... You, you'll be surprised at but the it, end. But yeah, and also he'd, he'd hit the climax hmm. and do a cut-off. Yeah. Just after the climax. Like, yeah, maybe one or two more minutes, that was it, finished. <laughs> yeah. So you're still on a high from the climax. Hmm. There's no wind-down. And that was really good about the way Alfred did his. But James Wan couldn't do that sort of thing because obviously limited budget and everything else. Mm. But he made a very good production on what he had to play with. But mm. getting back on it, $1.2 million, he made over $100 million at the box office. Mm. Um, the critical reception was mixed. A lot of the critics didn't like it. It's a crappy movie. And gets on, I keep saying all the time, don't go by it. Go, don't go by it. Go, go, go. Excuse me, I'm breaking a new tongue. Um, don't go by what the reviewers say because the reviewers, if they don't like a particular movie style, they're not going to rate it properly. And I and, and that's what I, they're, they're just a bunch of no hopers who couldn't make a movie if their life depended on it, and they're judging movies. I'm sorry, you know they're not very good. They're a bunch. Of, I think a lot of them like trolls almost. And don't like them. Yeah, I hate. Yeah, I mean, I hate a lot of the reviewers. I've talked to a number of people. Yeah. And just people, guys, not reviewers. And just a third or just 20 or 30% people I've talked to often say they don't like horror films. Exactly. So and you, just maybe yeah. some of these reviewers might don't be, like horror movies. may not like horror movies. and But they're forced by their newspaper, by newspaper or, or magazine or to, to watch review it. And review it. So, that's a load doesn't of crap. matter if it's a I good review like or a bad review. They'll yeah. just say what comes yeah. to mind. They don't even say, oh, the good filming and blah, 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 blah. I don't like the top movie, but no, they just say, oh, the, a load of crap. Or yeah, the no. colour, like how it's yeah. the grunt, like they use a lot of, in with Saw's movies, they used a lot of greens and, and well, yeah, gray, yeah, yeah, dark colours. They, they, they use a dark, yeah, dark, lower light tones. Even in colors. daylight, yeah, they, yeah. even daytime, even though there's not very much daytime in this, these movies. Uh, it Night's sh- always good. Yeah, it, sh- it shows that it looks more creepier. And well, not- you look, Dark City was like that. Everything was done in the dark. Yeah. And that, that, that had a good feel about it. I mean, we must review Dark City one day. That's a good movie. Yeah. I agree. Mm. Anyway, rolling on with development stuff. Um, um, as we said earlier, that uh, they couldn't get funding in Australia, so they approached mm. Ameri- American uh, people. Um, I do like it when they do mm. s- when they come to a certain room in in Jigsaw's world. Like they would use different filters. Like in one scene in the Saw Two movie, where they go to the Needle Pit, that was a very bright, bright yellow color, wasn't it, Mike? Wasn't it, Mike? Yes. Which it kind of su- which kind of surprises probably the audience when you look at it? 
That's what I like about this movie, the bright, the, the interesting colours they use. They did, yeah, all contrasting colours. You know, in different movies, it changes a little bit here and there, but it still has that same nice effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you know, brights against darks. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. what Jigsaw says about uh, finding a needle in the haystack, and that's yeah. yellow mm-hmm. colour makes me think of yellow yeah, Well, yellow haystack. hay, and the, there was a key, or not a key, what was it? Um, Key, was it? A, a key attached to a, a syringe. A syringe. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, yeah, so he had little things planned like that, and that, that worked really good. Anyway, I was just talking about Go on. Uh, development and writing and stuff. Yeah, they couldn't develop it in Australia, so they went to America, mm. and they approached several people, and, and, and they finally found someone interested to take it on. Mm. And the people who took it on were prepared to give James Wan a go at directing it, where the other guys weren't prepared. They could have got a better deal through other production companies, mm. but there, there was no guarantee that let him that let him direct, mm. and there's no guarantee that uh, his partner would be able to act in it. Mm. But uh, the guys who started Twisted Pictures, they said, yeah, we'll give you a go at directing it, James, and your mate can play the lead role. Cool. Or one of the leads. Mm. And there you go. And it turned into a, um, a really awesome movie. Well, and I think Giving really... Giving them both cre- good credibility. And, and I, I think really, honestly, that James Wan, I wouldn't say he's a genius, but he must have been a very good student at his film stu- uh, film college or film school or whatever to actually learn so much and be, be able to apply the skills so mm. readily to his first film. Mm, agreed. Some people do the first film, I won't mention names here, and they usually stink mm. or, they're, or they're, they're poor or, you know, they're lacking something. I don't think this one lacks. Hmm. So James has done really good. And the story that he and Lee Wanell put together wasn't a bad story. Hmm. Hmm. And it wasn't a bad script considering it was a low-budget movie compared to the big ones who also flop a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not about the money, it's about the talent. Mm-hmm. I often think, mm. I do like the fact that the twist endings are my f- favourites and I like the the traps and the prosthetics they use in the oh, yeah, it's, it's the, I mean, they don't use CGI in this. They kind of use real yeah, um, yeah, props that's, that's thing. to... It's a, 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 very, a very severe lacking of uh, mm. CGI. It was all done yeah. old-time stuff. I you, watched yeah. a few behind the scenes of how they make these traps, and some of them were really interesting, how they do develop them. Like, Do they really work? Mm, I don't think uh, so. But I do yeah, like yeah, the yeah. fact that in... That these traps are really interesting, especially I like the prosthetics, how they just put it there and make people believe that this person's chopping off her arm. And yes, yeah, so they have a rubber arm, which looks real, or your know, latex arm, or whatever it's made. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it looks so real. You know, holy, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, look, I ha- look, I love I love horror movies, but I really hate the sight of blood. Mm-hmm. And this is a blood fest in some parts of it. For those of you who are a bit squeamish. Some of these things, uh, uh, if it, not just this but the first one, but all through this, this franchise, there is a bl- bit of bloodletting, and if it turns you off, I, I would suggest look away, but watch the movie. Yeah. Okay. The only one trap I would ne- would like to see in Saw <coughs> is a guillotine. Even though we seen a we seen a, um, a pendulum in in. You know, oh, see. we've seen lots of different little good groovy things, yeah. but yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I haven't seen a guillotine type thing. Yeah, yeah, we've seen a lot it's of things. Too like... basic, I think. Maybe it had to be really good and interesting. Like, um, well, we don't want to talk about all the little joyous little traps and everything and uh, torture device because that'll take away from everybody's fun. I agree. I mean, I did like the um, the rack that was in the third movie where the guy yeah. ended up having his limbs. Twisted, off. Well, well, twisted, twisted and snapped off, and twisted he, and snapped, yeah, and then uh, his final he, piece of his head was twisted, twisted around. Twisted around, yeah. and you can get the picture. This guy was supposed to be trying to save him. And we, we, I, 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 just in case to pick up, we're jumping from movie to movie here. We've already done the first movie. Yes, yeah. so, I mean, I would like to review all of them, but there's, there's, there's eight. two, there's eight, and yeah. we, and I don't want to have you here all night. Yeah, but, but I can give you a cliff notes of why what why John did this, you know, John 
Um, the jigsaw did this. Mr. Kramer to you. Yes. You don't know him personally. So John and his wife Jill, they were a happily couple. They are about to have a baby, but then something horribly goes wrong. What happened to his wife? His wife gets uh, suffers a miscarriage uh, by, uh. by a unexpected junkie who just push who slams the door into her stomach because he was stealing drugs from her Um, clinic. uh And this was kind of the last straw for dear old John. So he takes it, makes his mission to get him and kill and test him. One of his first victims. And then Mm. I don't know how it happened, but, or when it happened or if, when it happened, but John somehow, somehow develops cancer. He gets a tumor on his brain. Yes. And he, after hearing the results, say he's going to not live to, uh, he'll only live for two years or one year. Well, actually, let's go back. They misdiagnosed him first. They got the, the, the x-rays mixed up. Yes. He's x-ray and somebody else's, uh, uh-huh. and they put the wrong name on it and say, oh, you don't have your tumor, you've got a clear uh, x-ray. And and they found out, what, 12 False months hopes. later or something, rather, they actually had the tumour, had they mixed up the x-rays, uh, and it was t- inoperable by then. Yes. Yeah. So it was like too little, too so late. He, had to, he, he was really annoyed of the hospital and the doctor, doctor and the x-ray guys and everybody else, and we believe that, um, that Dr. Gordon was his oncologist. Yeah, another yeah. thing was um, his... Health insurance guy, I'm told, turned him down for an opportunity to have a, a specialist who developing some better cancer treatments might help him. And uh, okay, turned, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Remember, 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 and yeah. this kind of turns it on its head. That so, tr- dear old John just probably goes out and kills him, tries to kill himself. Yeah. But fortunately, he Didn't survived. Work. And it's so hard he to kill uses, yourself. You just can't get good help nowadays, can you? And he uses this um, idea, <laughs> or philosophy, I should say, <laughs> to try to inspire people to take, try to um, to um, realise that they can do so much better with their lives if, they, if they're given the chance. <laughs> so he puts together a few props, a few um, interesting... Um, you know, equipment, and he's he then tests his subjects one by one. Yeah, I mean, some of the movies have got some really interesting. I don't want to say too much because I want you guys to see the movies. Yes, um, they've got some really interesting ways yeah. to kill people. Yeah, um, in the seventh yeah. movie, which mm. is pre, is sort of a bit of a mixture <laughs> of a prequel to us and a sequel. It went back and forth in that in that one, and which other one? You know the sev the sev the eighth one. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, the uh, jigsaw. The jigsaw, jigsaw one. The one that came out in two thousand seventeen. Yeah. Which yeah, kind yeah. of confused the audience, probably thinking, "Is jigsaw alive or dead?" Yeah, it's it's it's, it's doing a yeah. It's 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 facing from now to past to past, but there's two stories and it actually connected, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, they're running separately, mm. and uh, yeah. but still all jigsaw, mm-hmm. and uh, and you find out the guy you least expect to be involved is the person involved with the killings, mm. and I will not say anything more because you need to see Jigsaw yeah. two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, the, those who did survive, some of them, I should say. Um, go on to become apprentices to Jigsaw, yeah. known as Jigsaw <laughs> Apprentices, or exactly. or pig heads. Pig heads. Well, well, yeah, that's the um, mask he wears or yeah. sports, or his followers wear and wear sport. His following um, other associates, I should say, are Detective Hoffman and and um, what's his name? Um, Amanda, obviously. Mm. I named that my cat. Amanda, <laughs> our pussy cat. And yeah. <laughs> Dr. Gordon and um, our, another person I won't mention. <laughs> okay, right. So, anyway, um, so he gets these guys, they follow him, and along the way, he still contracts his cancer and he withers and dies eventually, but he still manages to try to continue his work. 
by testing his followers ever so often. Exactly. In the end, Amanda, who failed to be a good enough apprentice and a good enough follower, she dies because she re- refuses to follow his orders and his exactly. tests. Exactly. She was she was not, not following. It wasn't playing the game. How's that? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, she was unaware of it at the time. No. Well, she was. A junkie. Mm-hmm. And Hoffman... Her, her head screwed up a little bit. Yeah, and Hoffman is... Um, he was never test properly tested, but eventually Jigsaw's wife um, kind of fixed that by putting um, the um, special rest bear trap on his head, a new one. Oh, which, yeah. Mm. Which kind of, split, ex, kind of split half of his face off. Which yeah, he got out of it. Eventually, he took his re- takes his revenge on Jill, and he thinks he's in the clear. By he's already killed all of the people who may know he's um, probably a jigsaw apprentice, and thinks that he can get on go on the run. But fortunately, um, he forgot one motive, one other person who may be aware of his connections. It turns out Doctor Gordon was told to um, jump into action if Jill was ever hurt or or in danger hmm. so he takes it upon himself and his apprentices or jigsaw's apprentices because there's a few more probably hovering around i don't know their identities and well, they are t- supposed to know their identities and <laughs> and we hear in a flashback hmm. in a video where jigsaw tells um gordon to jump into action if which, when jill is in danger or anything like that Lovely. and he tells him in return for that he won't tell any more, won't hold any more secrets from Doctor Gordon, which he has a lot in this series. He kept holding back something that, but then you, then you think you you know everything about Jigsaw, and then you are left. You kind of find out something new and rare, and then you'd be surprised again. But mm. in this case, Doctor Gordon. He, he seems to probably know a lot more than Hoffman is aware of. And Hoffman is now placed in the very same bathroom that he was, that Dr. Gordon was in. And just so you know, Dr. Gordon, he survived and he's walking on a prosthetic leg. A walking stick. Yes. He's still walking like a limp, but other than that, he's still ma- able he's to mobile. He's up and around. He's mobile. So... So Hoffman is forced to stay in the bathroom till he dies of dehydration or hunger or whatever. Uh, all, all the above. Yeah. So he can either eat Adam's bo- dead body to stay alive or just... He could be a vegetarian. S- what? Why is he a vegetarian? Eats me. Mm. Anyway, he was about to take the <clears throat> saw that was gr- that Dr. Gordon did to sever his foot to, at, to save himself, but Dr. Gordon takes it away so he... So Hoffman can suffer until his dying days. The end. Of course, in the other one, the Jigsaw one, we then get more dive into more of the story there and explains a little bit more of the backstory of how how there was more people connected to Jigsaw. Like we find out in that one that he has a nephew that we didn't know in the... First seven other movies, did well, we? Uh, no. Well, yeah. was, but if you watch the movie, you'll find out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and how he was ne- he lived next door to a bunch of neighbours whom turned out to be, um, uh, well, women who killed her own child. Oh, okay. That was horrible. Don't, don't give everything away for all the movies. Sorry, guys. Uh, there's so much stuff that's I really mean, there's, interesting. Yeah, in over eight movies, and a potential ninth movie, um, there's a lot of good groovy stories and cross stories, and you can do the background stories of some of the people. It's really interesting. So yeah, yeah it's, it's they're worth a watch if you like good horror. This is a good horror. Yeah, I always tell Mike mm-hmm. here whenever a character is acting funny or weird or keeping something from <coughs> another ca- character because he doesn't want to let them know, it it would really be a poor imitation if the characters just are one hundred percent off you know, honest with one another. No, nah, it would make it too boring. It makes the movie too short. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, getting back on... And too of, resolving, <laughs> anyway. And getting back on some production stuff and everything else, um, when J- James Wan was trying to market this uh, movie, he made a two-minute short 
equipment costing five thousand hmm. dollars to use to market it through uh, different production companies. That's cool. And studios, and um, he had several offers, like I said before, and he got on to uh, actually <laughs> Mr. Hoffman. It's funny that, um, and yeah, Mr. I think Hoffman from what's his name? Sorry, I can't his first name here. Uh, Greg Hoffman. Uh, he put, Greg Hoffman saw the short and he was taken by it. He showed his partners that, and they actually made Twisted Pictures Productions to make this movie. Brilliant. So, and they were so inspired by it, and they gave uh, uh, James Wan and Lee a chance to strut their stuff. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, it can only happen in America. You know. um, but I'm but, kind of mm. happy that they, they got their work. Yeah. I just read that these the um those review guys. Oh, well, here's the something too. Stuff. Here's something. Go on. Uh, Greg Hoffman and the other guys were so impressed. They rose, raised their own money by mortgaging uh, their headquarters. Wow. To raise the money hmm. to make the movie. They didn't, like, they didn't get a loan. They, well, they didn't just go, to, oh, bank, oh, oh, I get some money out. No, they actually mortgaged their property because they had so much faith in the uh, the, pro- the product. Sounds a bit like something out of hi- out Alfred hit- Hitchcock. He had to sort of fund his own production, yeah. Yeah, if we psycho. So, yeah, not bad, hey. So these guys were really taken by James Wan and Lee's uh, one old script. Yeah, well, they were taking mm, out... Yeah. Um, a a bit, mm. Well, not exactly a risk, or a bit well, it was a risk. It could have gone flat in its face, but it made a hundred and um, hundred some hundred hundred and four mil, whatever. Mm. Yeah, but and actually the thing is, is they they got twenty five. Lee and um, uh, James got twenty five percent of net profits. Sweet. Well, yeah, that well, they catch up pretty quick, didn't they? Hey. <laughs> and had total control. Sweet. Of the production. Great. Mm, yeah. So that means they get their and the creative control and everything, and they so they knew what they wanted in their heads. So well, why not let them strut the stuff in the uh, yeah. on the sets and make it happen? And yeah. that's where um, well, they yeah. saw the short and figured these guys are on the level, and we they know should, and they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah and yeah. we should not fill with their what works for them. Mm. So we're, and and they're a good working team. You take us, you take our project on you. We come along with it. Yeah, and, and they gave them a chance, and it worked. Yeah, hey. I don't know what Lee's doing, but Jane's been making movies. Mm. So yeah. yeah, who knows? Anyway, I, I won't go too much about casting and different things. That um, Tobin Bell was taken by the short, and he thought this is really groovy. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing about the new one that's coming out, the ninth one, mm. it's going to star um, Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Okay, that'd be interesting. Mm, it is interesting. I mean, um, <coughs> I know that some of these movies. Um, well, actually, there was probably some good fa- There were some well-known faces in that. We we established the guy who who plays Doctor Gordon. Yep, yep, yep. Is um, what's his name again? Who Doctor Gordon? Yeah, his character. Gary Ellis. Yes, he's been in a lot of movies like um, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, Princess, uh, Princess Prince Bride, Bride uh, um, Dracula, Dead and Loving It, uh, that Nosferatu, Symphony of Terror. Mm. And, and lots of other good groovy things. Yeah, and yeah. in this one, I didn't recognise him at first because he's a lot older than he did Oh, actually, this one ago. thing. Now, he's, he's English, yes, Carrie. Yes, vaguely. Uh, he's, Car- he's English. Mm-hmm. And um, Lee is Australian. Mm-hmm. They had to put on American accents the best they could. Ah. And I think they covered it reasonably well, but I think they... Because they weren't doing multiple shootings and everything, like oh well, maybe two takes of that scene, whatever. Sometimes you, you could hear their accents coming out a bit. I bit can more. actually did sense yeah, it, yeah, yeah. especially yeah. in one scene where yeah. when Dr. Gordon was acting a, bit, a, dr- a little bit more dramatic. Yeah, in, he, in he, one he scene. might have come over a bit more English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but when you, but again, if you ain't doing one or two takes of each scene, and you're really pushing it over an eight day schedule. You kind of have that sort of little... At least there's an explanation yeah, yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, So, yeah, it's a little thing. It's only a little thing. I think one of the reviewers picked, on it, picked up mm. on it. Who cares? It's just like <laughs> when you look at Ed Wood, who... Yeah, yeah. Who, um, who just like him, um, James Wan, mm. he had a small budget to play with and yeah. not enough footage to Yeah, it's so how you do what you with. can of what you got. So and that's another point. That gets me on to something about James Wan's first movie. Hmm. 
I don't know if you picked up on it. What he when he got all the filming done, hmm? he didn't have enough film to make the feature movie. Oh. Oh. Why do you think he did all the stills and newspaper clippings and other Clever. things? He padded it out. No, I mean, he had to pad that, but he he did it in such a way that worked in the story. That is clever. Him and the uh, the guy who was uh, doing the editing and whatever, they said, okay, we have to do something to add, add, add some extra scenes and add a few more minutes to the movie. And yeah. it was too, a bit too short. And they, that's why you had stills, you had newspaper clippings, you had that, and whatever. And like yeah. shot, shot, pretend photo shots of... of a bit of CCTV thrown yeah. in, that sort of stuff. And what you got then, you, had, you picked up another 5, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's and what a great way and and the people said oh yeah it's a a shoddy way to pad a movie out and some people thought it was great filmmaking because they use it quite well hmm, hmm. <laughs> so yeah I think it was good James did a good job I think they did great hmm. I mean but I won't go on to the critics because the critics don't know what I'm talking about but so oh I don't like it oh it was good it had some interesting bits but blah 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 but there, it's you just know, informative no when you think about it yeah. seeing as throughout the Saw franchise we hear. Um, Jigsaw does, you know, photographs his, his the people he's going to test. Yeah. And then we see those photos of them, you know, doing their <coughs> dirty deeds or... Dirty deeds and dirty... Like some of them have a very big secret that they don't want to tell anyone. Exactly. And, that's, and that comes out in a lot of movies there where people have, are in the room with other people and they've got to confess, you say confess their sins to the other people. What are you in here for? I didn't do anything wrong. You find out later on they killed somebody or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we won't go into who doing what because you want people to have a few surprises. Yeah. But wait, I, wait, wait a minute. I'm talking. But I, I should <laughs> mention that when they did the seventh one, it was like a sort of before all the other sore tests and traps and stuff. Yeah. I mean, this was like sort of um, Saw's way of doing his um, sort of a. Uh, Test to see if um if, if he can do these get these people to do what he wants yeah or be one hand one one step ahead of them like yep. I mean I think that's what Doctor Gordon said in this move in the first movie he says about um pl- you know planning out everything to make sure that every single thing is you know it was planned planned. Yeah, yeah, properly. Properly. He knew everything about everybody who was in that room and the reason why they are there. And he knew their personality. Yeah. He knew how they are going to decide yeah. to act, etc. He's a very clever man, Mr. Saul. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that that when he did um, sign dear old Dr. Gordon as one of his apprentices, I think he figured this guy knows what he's talking about when he said... Um, Vengeance be mine, saith the Lord... Yeah. And then just mine, says Mr. John Carroll. I'm Carey. a little amazed that Dr. Gordon became an, an apprentice. What? I know that everyone yeah, suspected him. You, if you, are you, in the beginning of the second movie, I think, hmm? you see from memory, that uh, you got uh, Dr. Gordon crawling down the hallway and he's, 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 he, he finds a hot pipe to cauterize his legs so it stops the bleeding. Yeah. And I think John Kramer comes down to help him. Yeah, he does. He yeah. um, wakes him up and says, congratulations, and you, you survived. survived. And yeah. he looked after him and, and made that... And the health and whatever. And made yeah. a, some prosthetic leg in... Well, he was an engineer. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and they had a good chance. I mean, I, was I don't know if... if I'm doc- surprised you haven't mentioned Stockholm Theory. I don't even know if um, Dr. <laughs> Gordon, if yeah, Doctor yeah, Gordon yeah. ever went back to his wife or child. He might have. May or may not. Yeah, I mean, he's still working as a doctor. We see him in his office in the seventh in the yeah, seventh Yeah, so he movie. might have gone back to his wife. Mm, yeah, yeah, and keeping the whole well, yeah. experience a secret. But anyway, he, he, he got into an unholy alliance with Mr. John Kramer. Anyway, what I was going to say before you took me off on a different tangent, accolades. I, I found something here. There's a, there's a crowd called Bloody Disgusting. Mm. Great name. Uh, they rate the film 10th in its list of the top 20 horror films of the decade. 10 out of 10? No. I don't know. Hmm. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, sorry, go on. You're saying? I said 10th in the list of the top 20 horror films of the decade. Oh, cool. Okay, right. With an article calling Saw perhaps the most influential horror, horror film of the decade. Hmm. Which kickstarted the franchise. It goes on a bit more, yeah, about the, the measly budget of 1.2 million, blah, 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 blah. 
And uh, and this guy, at least there's some, yeah, least there's some something people positive, positive out there. Like I said to Sarah several times over, over the uh, past year or so, that it doesn't matter how much money you got to put towards doing a movie. It depends on how much heart and enthusiasm hmm. and talent you put into it. Hmm. The money is a side. I mean, sure, if you've got a couple of million dollars, you make a movie fine. But if you haven't got a couple of million dollars, you can still make a movie cheaper, under a under mil, a few hundred thousand dollars maybe. Hmm. It won't be as good, obviously, with sets and stuff. Make use of what you got. Hmm. But, yeah, and do a, call in a few favours. You know? hmm. Get somebody on a camera who won't ask for any paycheck or it will get everybody on there for a percentage of cash takings or something or other do something get get people to sign up and do it for free and like these guys 25 percent of me he didn't pay his, um, his cameraman or anything no like I, no i didn't say that you see james one and what's he probably got 25 percent of the net profits when it went out if you get everybody lined up say okay everyone gets you get everyone gets five percent hmm. of what we make on it hmm. And if everyone's prepared to come along, hmm. you don't have to pay your cameraman or your sound guy or your actors or anybody else. And if it goes out there and you start making money, everyone gets a kickback. Yeah. Anyway, do yeah. you want to... So you don't um, need money? Shall we um, rate... Oh, wait. That's a little hard. That's a little hard. No, I'm, no, no. A... We're going to rate a, a double rating on this one. Thing. Hmm. We're going to rate the movie, the first movie, hmm. and then we'll rate the franchise. Okay, okay. okay. That'll be good. Now, okay. What I think... It's might have been seen a bit stupid. I think the movie saw number one. I'm going to give it a ten. I'm going to give it a ten too. Only because they did it on such a such a good production on a low budget, and honestly, I think it works. The directorship was good. The camera work was good. The sets were believable. And the producers um, were an awesome <clears throat> bunch of guys who just it, allowed it, them to go and, and, yeah. crazy. With well, yes. Yeah. Well, then they had creative control. Uh, now I'll probably give. The, the whole franchise, I'll say nine, nine and a half, nine, nine and a half around there. Because, only because, you know, it, it, I, I don't say it gets a bit tired in some bits of it. Some of it does but get a little bit predictable because, you know, I mean, you, know, you start to run out of ideas when you've got a franchise. So yeah. you still draw back on some of other good groovy things which has been happening. And uh, to me, even though it's still fresh, it's a new script. Yeah, it, it gets some areas. Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's it, it becomes a little bit predictable, but still good. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. so, so I'm a ten gonna, and a nine and a half. So yeah. I'm gonna rate it um, differently from Mike here. I mean, I've I like the fact it's so creative. It's um, <coughs> it didn't u- rely too much on CGI. You know, on locations no, or all, in special effects. I don't think any of them did CGI, did they? Mm. Not too. No. No. I think, I that, think that they, they did. Use, they did. They they did. In some of the move, some of the scenes, they did film on on location in their studio sets. Yeah, the studio sets. I the, mean, the bathroom was a set. Yeah, they, they built that. Yeah, and um, some of the um, their offices that you know they just filmed a re- you know in the office. Yeah, they, they um, just used an ordinary plain old bit of their office yeah, and building and just set it up as a hotel room and just didn't exactly and, right. Well, like you did with your um. Doc, uh, your uh, your project they had to do the meeting of the scientists and the intrepid investor explorers who are going to go to the island and Don't they, we, no I'm just saying you, you set up a room in a location so you could be a, uh, a laboratory mm. yeah. Um, yeah yeah why not yeah Let's so do it. so anyway um, I do think that was very creative and I I I'm not a big <clears throat> fan of CGI all the time sometimes it, if when, you, when if, it, you, if you if it's if you are in need of it maybe but the rest of the time you rely on the other people because yeah. they are respective they they need um they they need to pay their bills pay <laughs> get by the food but by the, the and but stuff the like that but special people can do a lot more hmm. I wouldn't say how how about I I I've seen, seen some CGI which doesn't look real enough. Mm, I know. I've noticed that. In some movies. They've mm. done it in, so straight away, say, that's CGI, you yeah. can pick it. Not in all movies, but when you've got somebody there doing it real time with real special effects stuff, it's really hard to pick if you've got a good special yeah. effects person. I mm. just like it when people do film on locations. Mm. I mean, real locations, not fake locations. I know that some yeah. people often think, think that 
filming on locations is a risk because you there could be a rainy weather. day oh, yeah. and weather could r- damage your look film. At your, you look at your cost control. If you have to go in and do everything inside a studio and build all these sets up and pay all these carpenters and their plasterers and blah, 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 and so on, so on. And when you go out there, oh, there's a house. Can we borrow your house? You know, give me a couple of thousand dollars. Hey, we, we want to film, yeah. film here. Yeah, like when they... F- uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Not anyway, um, so I definitely got to um, rate the whole franchise um, 10 out of 10 for Ooh. that. So that's how I feel special. Feel it's so special. Well, there you go. And then. the fact that it has a good continuation going well, there. Well, actually, that's another point. The continuity from movie to movie does work. Hmm. So you know, it's not like all standalones, but you can, you can watch them as a standalone. Yeah. But they're all connected. And I like to uh, think yeah. that there was mm. layer upon layer of why Jigsaw became Jigsaw. Not just because he had cancer. Maybe he had other... Um, well, he his wasn't... wife was killed by a guy who didn't get punished properly. Yes. And he probably did it for yeah. once. And then he hoped to go back to... Yeah. Um, well, he actually was going through a mental breakdown at one point. And yeah. then when his life was not going back to normal, mm. he then gets the bad news that he's got cancer yeah. going through his system. And yeah. he then has to make a few lifetime changes to his yep. life. Moment of truth. <sighs> yes. The meaning of life and all the other good groovy things. Mm, mm. Yes, yeah, so I think we're coming anyway, to coming to an end of this podcast. We're bored you enough tonight. So now. I'd like to <laughs> talk to you guys again about my upcoming film project, my documentary I'm working on. Oh, it's out the air. Yeah, I've already gotten so several people involved in it, and I'm really quite happy with the amount of fi- filmmakers and actors who've taken interest in this. Yeah, I, I've seen some of the. I haven't seen all the footage, but some of those. Uh, are very informative. Um, there's one especially, a special one there that I think everyone's going to love. Yeah, I'm really, I'm, I, I know which one you're meaning, Mike. So We can't say anything but more. I, again, no. I'm not going to tell you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to keep it um, tightly, se- you know, secret until we actually yeah, review the it's footage. It's quite good, actually. And I think it's going to be feature length, is it? Or the way it's going? It seems like it's going to head into a feature length yeah, it's an um, hour and a half or something. Or, yeah. most of the mm. footage I've seen so far seems to be heading in that direction. Yeah, it's not, some of it's long, so you, it's, it's, you just have to sort of trim some down. I might have to do a bit of slicing and yeah, dicing yeah. here uh, and yeah. there. And to make it we'll keep it interesting and everything and to get rid of superfluous stuff. But at the end of it, it's going <coughs> to... Excuse me, it's sinuses. Yeah. <coughs> I think it's going to be really, really good to way. It's mm. having me up. Some very interesting people. Some have got, got a lot to say. Some have a little bit to say. But everyone's got something to say. Yeah, and I'm really happy for mm. them. I mean, I love the stories. Yeah. And it's great that so many of you guys out there who have been keeping yourselves busy last year, I'm glad that you guys have been doing it. Well, look at us. We're busy. We were doing podcasts all last year, and we're still doing it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was doing... I'm still post-editing my, yeah. f- my it, film. It's I'm, almost near the end of it now. And, yeah. I just have a few last-minute tweaks t- that will c- to clear away. And then exactly. hopefully, once that's done, I'll start doing, uh, adding music and other yeah, stuff musical score, Atmos, and everything else. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's the and important things stuff. such as that, and the important stuff to make your make it more believable and more and, cool. And, and the credits, make sure I'm in them. I'm actually got the credits already. Am I in it? Yep. Uh, lots. Yep. Many times. Yes. Assistant, uh, assistant producer, exec producer, caterer, caterer, <laughs> transport. Uh, best boy electrical, uh, all that, yeah, all okay. that, <laughs> yes. So, so, anyway, I think that's about it for us tonight. So, um, we'll, I hope we get to hear from you guys again. I hope you guys hear us again for our next keep, podcast. Keep listening, again. It, it's fun. Uh, we got, we'll, we'll, we'll never bag anything totally. If it's a, if it's a really bad movie, we probably won't review it. Yes, yeah, so because we'd rather not say anything about a bad yeah, movie. So this yeah. is Sarah Stevenson and and Michael saying, "Hope for you guys to have a good weekend." Arrivederci.